If you've ever thought about starting your own cash-based telemedicine practice or adding cash-based telemedicine service to your existing practice, you definitely don't want to miss this episode of Bootstrap MD. Hello again, everybody. This is Dr. Mike Wu Ming with this episode of Bootstrap MD. Today we're going to be talking about telemedicine, or as in my state, we call it telehealth for whatever reason, and just kind of my experiences on it and how you can start your own cash-based telemedicine practice. So as I was growing my own cash-based clinic several years ago, um, just to make ends meet, I joined a telemedicine company. It was a startup. Um, I got to know the medical director with that, and, and I was started along with a few other doctors. And... Telemedicine has been around, you know, forever, but, you know, there is no one big company out there. There's no Microsoft in there. There are a lot of companies that are vying for that, and of which one of these companies was trying to do and is actually pretty well known. But when I was doing it, it was a startup, and um, they paid me by the hour, and it, I started in my own clinic, adding it as a component of it, and the thing was, and they got me licensed in all these different states, but it was very slow because they were a growing company now. Um, and at that time, there wasn't a lot of traction. There wasn't a lot of information on telehealth as there is now. So I actually think they probably lost money on that. Um, that eventually led to me uh, leaving and I went to become a medical director for a pretty large, probably one of the largest weight loss telemedicine companies that are out there. And I got to see both the pros and cons, you know, of of doing that and there's certainly and that's what I want to kind of discuss today we have now incorporated into our own clinic on on pilot runs and I've seen other providers starting to use it on their clinics also with different levels of success but if you are someone who wants to start your own cash-based telemedicine practice I've got some tips that I think you could definitely benefit from um, but like I said there are definitely pros and cons so Right now, there is definitely a lot of interest from the public. They love the idea about telemedicine. I hear it from my own patients, you know, is there a way I don't have to drive across town to see you or to see my nurse practitioner um, if it's for a follow-up? And, and he says, yeah, there really should be because, it's you know, we're one of the few businesses that were really kind of behind the times in utilizing telemedicine uh, because, you know, most of what we do, of course, is a face-to-face -face interaction. But as... You know, society, we're just busier all the time. We're always on our phones, and so why don't we use the, the technology on our phones, right? So, again, it's something that people have been, you know, debating and, and arguing about, and what's the best way, you know, to, to get it out there. Um, right now, you know, when, when I was working, and as it is today, you know, I had license in all of these different states, and it takes time to get, you know, verified and licensed in all of these different states you know i wish they had a universal telemedicine license so i think if you're of course if you're starting it from your own clinic and you're using it as an extension of your own clinic i first start with your own state to just to make sure that that you are you understand the rules of your of your state and how it applies to telemedicine you know because of course we don't want to get you in trouble right um but there's certainly drawbacks to it you know in the company that I was involved with, as in many of the other telemedicine companies out there, it was primary care. So there's definitely going to be a limit to to privacy. If you're if a, if you see a patient, and let's say they have a rash in a area that is not wants to be publicly seen, you know, and you know that's going to be a a big barrier to that. Um, you know, there's always going to be patients. There's also going to be these expectations. There can be expectations for patients who are mad at you because you they paid for an antibiotic and you're and they paid they have an antibiotic and you think it's viral, which is of course is in many of these when you're talking about upper respiratory infections. So, and then of course there are always conditions that you know you're never going to be able to do through telemedicine. Certainly the psychiatry psychiatrists have have it figured out. They've been in telemedicine. For, for a while, you know, your radiologists use uh, telemedicine in hospitals. Um, and, you know, just until recently, there was a lot of 
legal issues and got doctors got in trouble um, using telemedicine. Uh, you know, just until recently, my state, you could not see a patient, you know, for the first time through telemedicine, you had to have a good faith exam or you had to have been an existing patient uh, until they recently kind of changed the laws. And still, if you read the laws in, in my state, everything is still vague in terms of t what telemedicine and what you can, do, can and can't do. And it's really, it's up to your discretion. So their discretion may be a bit different from the medical board's discretion. So there is still that wild, wild west that we're seeing, of course, in telemedicine. Of course, we all know about all of the different telemedicine companies out there. Many of them are, you know, catered to primary care for the most part, directly to consumers. Uh, sites like DoctorOnDemand.com, CallADoc, CallOnDoc, uh, many, many different companies. And we'll leave some links here on there. And I'm not here to promote one specific company that's out there. But, you know, I think many of them have learned their lesson about um, not paying doctors by the hour. You know, because literally I would be paid for eight an eight hour shift at this telemedicine company and... I might see one or two patients, maybe a handful at, at most. And, you know, so it was, but the company I had to work with, you had to be in a, it was in my clinic, but it was in a, I had to sit there. And at that time, you know, our, our clinic was, was pretty slow. So um, many of the companies now is by consult or, by, you know, by visit. So, and, and these are startups. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of doctors, of course, who are signing up for it. And then they get very discouraged because the amount that they actually get, you know, per console, how much you're actually getting paid is, you know, you know, 10, 20, 30, maybe, you know, if you're lucky and if you're seeing one, you know, one patient an hour, it's obviously it's not going to be worth worth it to you. Um, and again, we'll, uh, there is a, a company that, that uh, we're referring people to called Enzyme Health, and I'll give you a link if you sign up. But it, what it nicely does is gives you a list of all the different telemedicine companies, just so that you know, full transparency, if you do sign up, I, it, it's a referral and I get uh, something for that. But uh, I, I work with the company and they're, they're pretty good guys. So you want to check those out um, and we'll leave a link to that. But getting back to my point is there's a lot of different telemedicine companies. Many were in the startup phase. They're trying to get a lot of these doctors and they, you know, they got to pay for if they're going to do it through the whole country, they got to pay for each state. So you might be very um, dismayed about what you're actually being paid by these companies. Now, if you are wanting to start your own telemedicine company, because that's what it's here all about, Bootstrap MD, I focus more so on you having your own company rather than you work for someone else. I do encourage you just to see if you like it is to sign up with one of these telemedicine companies and to see if it's right for you before deciding to do it on your own. So really, so you can get your, your feet wet, you can see how it kind of works. You can see what are the, uh, you know, ramifications of adding something to telemedicine and just, just to see if it's right for you. Now, most of the telemedicine companies that are out there um, at the beginning were, were synchronous. That means we're seeing patients in real time, meaning you, I had to sit there and waiting for a patient to come on to my computer so where I can see them. I am a big fan of asynchronous telemedicine is where you don't have to do it in real time. So you can do so where you get the information, you get the record, and then you can respond you know, via email or via video later or whatever your, that company does. So there's been a lot of demand for doctors who want to do this because obviously you can do it on your own time. It's just more convenient. And what this has led to is companies realizing is we sh why are we focusing on just being everything, you know, to everybody's like the urgent care and having these doctors just sit and, and as we're just kind of waiting for the public to start using telemedicine, why not just focus on one particular condition. So that's led to all of these asynchronous telemedicine companies um, that basically focus on one specific area. So you've got, you know, the most, I hear it on my satellite radio, they advertise all the time, Roman, get Roman.com for erectile dysfunction. See, this is what kind of drives me nuts though, too, is like, now it's all available, but like 10 years ago, if a doctor tried to do that, he'd put in jail or lose his license there. So 
this is where it, it's it's kind of crazy. You've got companies like HIMS, which does ED, but it also does things like low libido, hair, they have hair loss. Uh, there's a no, what they have a component now, I believe, for females now, but where, where they're they're doing that again, focusing on just one or, or a few conditions. I've seen one uh, on herpes and thyroid medications. Um, so if you're someone who want who wants to be in that area and wants to work in that area and then appeals to you, that might be an area you can go to Enzyme Health and you can sign up and see what the different companies. Now, again, many of these are startups. They don't have a lot of money. So you're kind of like hoping that someone will kind of take traction on there. Really, these companies are going to be as successful as long as they know how to market to the consumers and long as they have enough funding to keep them afloat. So, so it's kind of what I want to talk about there is just, you know, get your, get your feet wet, join up with some of these telemedicine companies, see if it kind of caters what you do. Now let's talk about how you can start your own telemedicine practice. Now, how we're using it is we're using it for existing patients and it's really, it's really been beneficial for patients who don't want to come in and it's something where you can actually schedule it. You can make a, you can decide what, how much you want to charge for that appointment and it could be an added extra revenue stream, especially if you're slow and things are going, you know, and they, and if you have like a, a provider that you, you're hiring and they have an empty space, why not start incorporating that into and just make it as another visit except you're using it now they're going to be on the computer instead of going to room number two so how can you get started well first off you're going to need to have a video platform that, that's privacy you know that understands privacy you know HIPAA compliant whatever you want however you want to phrase it uh, because we are just dealing with cash-based practices here now you don't want to use skype okay because because skype is not doesn't maintain the the laws you want to make sure that it is for in these purposes hipaa quote hipaa compliant uh, you don't want to use that now you can't use zoom as well which we often use for our webinars uh well i, I should take that back you can use it you would need something a, a company called advanced md it's a component it's a company that works with zoom um and some love it it is a little bit pricey but that's another way that you can do that uh another company is called chiron health chiron health c-h-i-r-o-n health uh, has also has a, a video platform that, that you can use. They use medical providers. Uh, probably one of the most uh, ones talked about is Doxy.me. Now they don't want just work with doctors. They work in different areas. I've seen it for uh, you know different others um, businesses. But Doxy.me uh, is nice. It's it's affordable. They even have a free component that you can use. And then if you want to add some of the features to that, it's not too expensive. So a lot of doctors. We want to do using that company as well and that's doxy.me um so you want to have a video a platform you know you want to have if you have doing your own clinic you want to have a, a set area where you want to do that you want to make sure that um it's an area it's not in your office where people can see like your records on the table and things like that just kind of like have it like you know just have an area you know have another room in there so you can just be doing these these uh, areas and then you don't have a lot of uh, you want to make sure that if you got a very clean environment with, where you're going there um, you'll also want to of course have electronic medical record with that so um, there are a few the one that's most famous we use practice fusion you know that's one it's freely available you know it fit our needs out there there are other uh, electronic medical records you definitely also want to use ones that have uh, privacy, you know, in email, you don't want to be using a Gmail. There are, you know, there are EMRs that have their own special email. I believe OneTouchEMR.com is one. If you are in the mental health space, Luminello is another one that is, gets talked about a lot. Uh, but just another way that you, again, you're using, you're taking advantage of electronic medical records. And I know anytime we talk about electronic medical records, I'm, you know, I think a, a, a little, little bunny like d d dies. If you talk about electronic medical records, I don't like talking about it. But again, if you're going to be using telemedicine one, you want to have one that has privacy and complaints. So again, go ahead. So those are some of the things that you want to do. So you got your, your EMR platform. You've got your video platform available to you. Um, just some thoughts on, you know, telemedicine in general. Before you start anything, it's always best. I'm not an attorney. You want to have a healthcare attorney in the, to kind of review what you're you're doing, you could because there are things like privacy policies that you definitely want to make 
want to make sure that, that you followed. And then, you know, if you got your own existing practice, the best way to do it is just marketing to existing patients. Say, hey, we've added a new service. We're kind of testing it out before we roll out here. You might work with a, you know, a few patients you know, for free just to make sure you get all the kinks out and then you can kind of roll it. Now, if you're someone who wants to start an existing practice, obviously you're, need, you're gonna need to know a little bit about marketing and, and, and doing that. And that could, that's gonna, that's a, that's a talk for like five to 10 different podcast episodes because I love talking about marketing. But you know, common ways that you can do it is you just do it the way that you currently market your existing practice. If you're using online, you know, that's why telemedicine is really good because these people are already, you know, on the internet. So they're used to being, to using services online. They're used to buying stuff on Amazon, those kinds of things, you know, using things like Google ads, Facebook advertising, all the usual kind of stuff you want to be doing and start promoting that. So it, it again, I've, what I've seen it best is using it for a, practice that just wants to add another extra revenue stream them make it more convenient for your patients definitely differentiate yourself from your competition by adding that and again you can always start slowly and then ramp it up and to, to see how it goes so those are my thoughts again i talked about a lot of different uh, companies that are out there and i'll leave links to there that you can go ahead and, and take a look at so hope that was worth it to you i hope to get some eight some of these uh, companies, these telemedicine companies come on my podcast in the future. So maybe we can really ask them the questions to see what's actually really going on. So this is Dr. Mike from Bootstrap MD. As always, keep moving forward.